So I've been really looking forward to actually reviewing the new Legion Pro 5i for 2023. They are a great priced with great specs in this age of very expensive gaming laptops. But my biggest dilemma when choosing this model is that I go for the Intel version or the Ryzen version. So with that in mind, I decided to get them both. So in the studio tonight, we have the Legion Pro 5i and the Legion Pro 5, the Intel and the Ryzen version of this very popular and reasonably priced gaming laptop. Now, both of these machines came in at £1,400 in the UK. If you go straight off their website, it's about £1,800, but as always with the Nova, use a discount code. So £1,400 for both. So with the Intel version, this came with the i5-13500HX CPU and an RTX 4060 and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now the Ryzen version, this comes with the Ryzen 7745HX CPU, an RTX 4070 and 32 gigabytes of RAM. So for the same money with the Ryzen, you're getting a better spec PC. So the great news by getting both of these in, we can compare Intel versus the Ryzen and the 4060 versus the 4070 to let you know which is gonna be the best value for money. So before we actually start the comparison, we're gonna pretend you've never seen a Legion Pro 5i before or Pro 5. They are very similar to last year's model, but we are gonna quickly cover over it for people that haven't actually used one of these laptops. So we don't need to compare both of these laptops because whether you buy the Ryzen or the Intel version, they're both externally exactly the same. You get all the same features. It's only the internals that separate the two. Now, when you're buying them, the 5i, is the Intel, i for Intel, and just the standard five is the Ryzen. Now these are the cheaper range from the Lenovo Legion, and because of that, we are mostly plastic with this build. But despite being plastic, it feels very solid, and it just feels a very good build quality. Uh, I'm not usually a big fan of plastic laptops, but having played around with these for the last few weeks, I'm really pleased with it, especially as it does bring that price down to a very sensible level, especially in 2023, when you're seeing a lot of the laptops well over two to three thousand pounds. And one of the things I love about Lenovo Legion laptops is they all have a great selection of ports that spread very well over across the whole of the laptop itself. And as I pick it up and I look to the left side, you can see we've got a USB-C and a USB-A. And I flip it over to the right. We've got another USB-A, a status light to show that we're actually in sleep at the moment, a webcam kill switch and an audio jack. And as we move to the back, this is where the main bulk of the ports are. We've got the power jack, another two USB-A, we've got an HDMI, we've got a USB-C, but unfortunately it's not a Thunderbolt 4 port, and we've got an Ethernet jack. So as you can see, it's a great selection of ports, and a lot of the ports that are gonna be more infrequently used, such as the Ethernet and HDMI, are at the back of the machine to make it much cleaner on your desk leaving the sides with the useful ports like the USB-C and the USB-A ports. Now, personally, I find this is a great layout for everyday use. I wish more manufacturers would take a note and the great selection of ports that Lenovo supply. Now, the one port that's missing, in my opinion, that I would have liked to have seen is an SD card slot, but these are aimed more at gamers than creators, so I'm kind of forgive Lenovo for that one. And as I spin it round to open it up, the great things about these legions is they are very easy to open with one hand. You have this nice lip at the front here to make it easy for your finger to open it up. And another great feature with the legions, is as you can see here, it can be opened with one hand and we can push it nearly all the way back to 180 degrees. This can be a handy feature, especially if you're stood up using your laptop, you can push the screen all the way back and still use it. Something I do quite regularly. Obviously, if you're sitting down and gaming, you're gonna have it at the normal angle, but it's nice that they allow you that range of motion. And actual hinges themselves, they do feel very solid. So though you can open it with one hand, it stays nicely in place. There's a little bit of wobble, but pretty much no more than any other mid-range laptop. So now that we have the laptop open, just get ourselves into Windows. We're gonna talk about the actual inputs of the laptop itself. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, it is all plastic, so the palm rest is plastic. We have a number of stickers. I don't know why Lenovo thinks they need to put so many stickers on that palm rest. The palm rest, although plastic, feels fine, doesn't pick up fingerprints, and there's minimal flex when you press down hard on the actual laptop itself. The touchpad is plastic. It tracks well, it feels pretty good, but obviously this is an area where they do cut costs by not giving you a glass touchpad, but I have absolutely no problems using it. I've been using it a fair amount with the touchpad. Now, with a gaming laptop, you're more than likely gonna be plugging in a mouse and using the mouse anyway, 
but if in a pinch you want to use it as a laptop with the touchpad, it's perfectly usable. And as we move up to the keyboard, this is a real strong point on pretty much all of the Nova range. The keyboard feels absolutely excellent. We have a keyboard with the number pads, although the number pad is a little bit crunched in on the right because this is a 16 inch laptop. But for anybody that likes number pads, I'm sure they'd take a slightly crunched number pads than none at all. Now that does have the disadvantage of having the trackpad pushed slightly over to the left to keep center it under the space bar. It's been no problems for me when I'm gaming. I have had no miss hits on the touchpad whilst I'm using the WASD keys. So personally, I think if you want that number pad, this is a great solution. The keyboard is backlit. Now this one has a white one zone, which is one of the options, whereas the other one has the multi zone. Uh, that's about a 20 pound upgrade. And personally, I think it's well worth it if you're spending this much money on a laptop anyway. But if you want to save some cost, this is one of the areas you could do it. And then above the actual keyboard, we've got the power button. And the power button has a little light that changes as you scroll through the actual profiles with the function and Q option. That's something that Legion have done for years. And I love the fact it's very easy to switch the profile you're in. And you can see instantly via the power button that you're in the right profile because you want to be red when you're gaming. And that makes a big difference to the performance. And it's easy to see just by glancing down at the keyboard. Now there's no speaker grills up and around here. That's because we've got downfiring speakers and they sound like this. Audio test of the Legion Pro 5i. Now this is also gonna be the same for the five that use the same speakers. 50% volume. And 80%. So there we go, pretty average and a little bit tinny sounding speakers. Uh, certainly not going to replace your home audio system, but for game sound and podcasts, they'll be fine. But I wouldn't want to be listening to some you know, heavy music on this. And as we move around to the screen, this is a 16 inch gaming laptop and we've got a 16 by 10, 2560 by 1600 high resolution panel that a lot of the 16 inch laptops are getting this year. And it is an excellent panel. Not only is it a good resolution that gives you good performance when you're gaming, and great image fidelity when you're working on the actual laptop. This comes in at about 500 nits of brightness, which is absolutely perfect, especially if you are working in a bright environment or outdoors, especially because it has a matte display. So this is a really, really great screen if you're in a bright room. Now you can choose it with a 165 hertz panel or the 240 hertz that I've got here. It wasn't an expensive upgrade when I was configuring it, so I definitely think that 240 hertz is well worth it. And this screen has been crisp and responsive. Now I've got the 240 hertz on both the models, so I haven't tested the 165 hertz, but from my experience on previous years, that's also still a very good panel. And as we move above the actual screen, we've got the webcam and the microphones. They look and sound like this. This is a test of the webcam and the microphones on the new Legion Pro 5i for 2023. And as this is their sort of entry gaming level range, the Legion 5, there is no Windows Hello, either facial recognition or fingerprint reader. And that is a shame because it's something that I've had on all my premium gaming laptops. When you come down to this more mid range, they obviously cut a few corners to get that price a bit lower, but it would have been nice. At least I've had the option to upgrade to a fingerprint reader, but you have to go old school and type your password to get in here. Now, before we start looking at the performance on these laptops, I want to just quickly talk about upgradability. Now, the good news is the Ryzen and the Intel both have the same options available. They both had two, Gen 4 M.2 slots for the SSDs. They both have two DDR5 RAM slots and they both have an upgradable Wi-Fi card. But the one oddity I found with my model, and I don't know if that's just a UK thing, but the Ryzen version shipped with 5,200 megahertz RAM, whereas the Intel version shipped with 4,800 megahertz RAM. Now this is something that you could change yourself, but it's very odd the way that they provided two different RAM speeds. Okay, so let's talk about performance. I wanna preface this by saying, that this year, you can't really go wrong by buying the AMD or the Intel version of this laptop. And both these models gave insane gaming performance at this laptop's native 1600p gaming panel. And both manufacturers have made big improvements to their CPUs this year. And AMD's 7000 range is a big performance increase over the 6000 range. And that's even more impressive when you consider that the 7745HX Ryzen chip in this laptop is cheaper than the Intel i5 CPU. When we look at Geekbench 5, the Ryzen pulls ahead in the single core scores, but then the Intel i5 pulled ahead 
in a Geekbench 5 and a Cinebench R23 multi-core score, and this is due to the Intel i5 having 14 cores and 20 threads on the CPU. So Intel, although more expensive, is still clearly taking the lead in CPU performance. And this is just the i5. You can also upgrade to the i7 or the i9 version, giving you even more CPU cores and even more performance, but obviously a lot more expensive to boot. And the Intel also has another ace up its sleeve, and that's because Lenovo used the HX range of unlocked processors, and Lenovo actually left them unlocked, meaning you can adjust the multipliers and the voltage of these CPUs. This can also be done in the Lenovo Vantage software, as well as Throttle Stop and Intel XTU. And with a modest 125 millivolt undervolt, I managed to get an extra 2,000 points in Cinebench R23 when running the same test, just because it's been able to boost that much higher due to the lower temps and lower power draw. Now this is really impressive and I think it's well worth doing. This is free performance that's being left on the table, so you should take advantage of it. But to make this review fair, all of the tests and benchmarks done in this review are done without any overclocking or undervolting between the Ryzen and the Intel. So these are straight as they are out of the factory. Moving on to the GPU performance, and because the Ryzen is so much cheaper than the Intel, the Ryzen version gets a 4070 GPU, whereas the Intel gets the 4060 GPU. And looking at the synthetic benchmarks, you can see that the 4070 is getting approximately 20% more performance over that 4060 in all of the benchmarks. Now both of these GPU came listed with the same 140 watt TGP, but as with most of these 4000 series cards, you're never really gonna hit it. With both the 4060 and the 4070, they seem to hover around 100 watts. You could get some spikes above, and in less demanding games, it would sit a fair bit below. And performance were as we were expecting for these 4060 and 4070 cards. And as we moved on to the actual gaming benchmarks and actual gameplay on these laptops themselves, the 4070 did particularly well, not only because you've got that 20% performance boost over the 4060, but also because this Ryzen processor was regularly running over five gigahertz. Now this makes a big difference, especially on eSports titles or games that need a lot of high CPU clock speeds. And these systems managed to game for hours on end without any throttling, without any problems with heat. Now the Ryzen did run a little bit hotter than the Intel, which was quite surprising, but neither of them had any problems with temperatures. And not only were the internal temperatures under control, but the external temperatures were also pretty cool. The palm rests and keyboards on both the Ryzen and the Intel were only lukewarm to the touch. There's gonna be no scorched palms for long-term gaming with these laptops. Now, each of the Ryzen and the Intel systems have three power modes. You've got the silence, you've got the balanced, and also the performance mode. You can tell by the color of the power button as to which mode you're in. Now, we found that the performance mode and the balance mode worked perfectly for gaming on both the Intel and the Ryzen. The performance mode is a fair bit louder, at just over 50 decibels. Definitely the balance mode is more comfortable, but you lose 10 to 20% performance on your games. But the silent mode, we found it was quite a big hit in gaming performance. It'd be fine for office work and multimedia use, but you only be playing casual or esports titles in that quiet mode. Now both the Ryzen and the Intel laptops have Optimus and a muck switch. But the Intel version came with advanced Optimus, meaning that you could switch between the integrated GPU and the dedicated GPU on the fly. Now with the Ryzen version, you do need to go into the Vantage software and select a dedicated mode and reboot the laptop to actually get it to dedicated mode. So it's an extra step and it is a bit slower, but you do have the advantage of full dedicated on both of these machines. Now moving on to battery life, and this is an area where I thought that the actual Ryzen version would have a massive, massive advantage over the Intel. In previous years, we've seen some Ryzen gaming laptops with 10 hours of battery life on sort of light use. This year, we've been very disappointed with the Ryzen laptops. This year, we managed just over four hours with the Ryzen version in our usual battery test, streaming YouTube over Wi-Fi at 50% brightness and 50% speaker volume. That's pretty poor for a Ryzen gaming laptop. And the Intel version was only just behind at about three hours and 50 minutes. This is usually an area where the battery life is the Intel's Achilles heel. In this case, Neither are particularly good. So with that in mind, you're gonna be needing to carry PSUs with your laptop if you wanna be gaming in that on the road. Even, you know, you're not gonna be able to do a full day's work with these laptops. And Lenovo do supply the usual 300 watt, chunky, reasonably heavy power adapter with these gaming laptops. Unfortunately, they haven't converted them to the GAN chargers yet, like they have with the Legion 7i Pro. But with that being said, both the Ryzen and the Intel versions do offer power delivery. Now, Lenovo stated that they offer 140 watts power delivery, but I haven't managed to get anything over 100 watt yet. I've managed to get 100 watt on both the Intel and the Ryzen version. Now, at 100 watts, both these are absolutely perfect for charging the batteries 
and doing your day-to-day -day work and multimedia use on these laptops. But I did find if gaming, I found the performance slightly better on the Intel version over power delivery than the Ryzen version. And this is something that hopefully Lenovo will fix with a firmware update, but at the moment, on natural power delivery, the Intel is definitely better. So then on to the conclusion, and I have to be honest, depending on where you are and the prices that you're offered these laptops at, neither is a bad buy this year. They are both great gaming laptops. Now, when I bought both of these for £1,400, the Ryzen is an easy win. We're getting a great gaming laptop with 5 gigahertz speeds on that CPU whilst gaming, which really does make a bit of a difference. We're getting 32 gigabytes of RAM with the Ryzen version over 16 on the Intel, and we're getting a 4070 graphics card rather than a 4060. So the performance on that Ryzen version for gaming is just massively better. So if gaming is your priority, definitely get the Ryzen if the prices are the same. But that doesn't mean the Intel is a bad buy. And if you're buying this as a creator or someone that knows that they need heavy multi-threaded CPU use, then the Intel did pull ahead, especially if you get that i7 or that i9. So you may still well want to pay a little bit more to get that Intel if you know that maybe content creation is your primary focus and gaming is your secondary. But either way, there's a lot of bang to the buck for both of these laptops. They're probably my favorite mid-priced gaming laptops that you can get out there with these 4,000 graphics. Now, yes, there are some flaws on these Legion Pro 5s. For a start, they are very plasticky. There's very little metal in these builds. There is a no frills laptop. There's no Thunderbolt 4, which is a real shame, or USB 4, especially when you're still paying one and a half thousand pounds. That's a lot of money to not have Thunderbolt 4. And there's no facial recognition or fingerprint recognition for Windows Hello. So you will be typing your password to get into it. But if you're looking for something that's an absolute bang for buck, gaming performance that doesn't throttle with a great screen and a great keyboard, then this really is a serious contender. So that's my thoughts on the Legion Pro 5 and 5i this year. I think they are truly are great machines. But as always, I'd love to know what you guys think. Please let me know in the comment section down below. Or if you've got any questions about this laptop, fire away and I'll do my best to answer. And as always, thank you for watching.